Welcome Tenants live Q&A. Uh, my name is Emily Marr. I'm the Director of Sales at our Peabody headquarters in Peabody, Massachusetts. Um, just to give you a quick background on myself, I started at Barton Associates a little over nine and a half years ago. I actually started as a recruiter, so I think I'll be the perfect person to answer all of your locum questions today. Well, I'll just start by giving a quick background for those of you who might be new to locums. Um, locum tenens, it's actually a Latin word. It means to hold one's place. And it's referring to entirely temporary work. It's 1099 contract work. And it actually gives providers the ability to travel, develop their CVs, um, gain new experience in different settings, um, and also you know, you know, travel to new places. Their malpractice insurance is covered through Barton. We coordinate travel. So we'll handle a lot of that piece for you guys. So that's a quick background on locum tenens. Um, how much experience do you need to have? So Jennifer's asking, how much experience do you need to have? So you don't need to have a certain amount of experience necessarily to be a locum. You obviously have to have a medical license in a state, but you don't need to have a certain amount of experience. We've worked with people that are fresh new grads out of residency or fellowship. We've worked with people that have one to two years of experience. So it can be a variety of levels of experience. Um, Andrew's asking, why don't locum jobs have benefits? So locums is a temporary contract that's through a third party company. So we do offer a lot of value such as travel. We book your travel, travel's covered. So rental car, flights to and from the assignment, um, uh, lodging is covered while you're there. Um, also, we have your malpractice insurance covered and you have someone working there for you on the credentialing side of things, the licensing side of things. And we actually also cover licenses up front. So we do offer a lot of value, but 401k and paid time off is something that you'd only get in a permanent position. Um, Zach's asking, do you assist with getting licensed in other states? I think that's one of Barton's number one selling points. We're big into licensing. We love proactively getting you guys state licenses. We'll cover the cost up front. We'll actually advise you on states that we think could be a good fit based on the clients that we have, and we'll also help you with the process. So we will absolutely do that. Um, Crystal is asking, how can you find a single person to work with at a locums company? Um, so you could, all, you could always go on bartonassociates.com to find a recruiter. Once you match with a recruiter, your recruiter is your go-to person. They'll be available for you 24-7. They'll go over your CV with you. They'll learn about your preferences. They want to know everything about you, where you want to travel. Do you have family in certain areas where you might want to see? Are there certain states that are high on your list? Um, what are your job preferences? Do you like inpatient? Do you like outpatient? Um, what, what's your preferred patient volume? So they want to learn all about you so they can match you with the right jobs at the right facilities. Um, Terry is asking, are there many positions that come available for pediatric nurse practitioners? Absolutely. Um, we do a lot in the peds market. Um, that is definitely a specialty that we see a lot of openings in. So 100% yes. Um, Paul is asking any opportunities for new graduates who are FMPs. Um, yes, we do work with new graduates. It can be at times a little bit more difficult to place somebody fresh out of school just because some of our clients are looking potentially for six months to a year experience, but we do place new grads. So don't be shy about reaching out to Barton Associates if you're fresh out of school. A lot of our clients do like to, to see people that are new into the industry, new into the market. So yes, 100% we work with new grads. We're excited to work with you guys. Definitely come onto our website and sign up. Um, Andrew's asking, or Andre is asking, what prospects are there for a doctor who is licensed with only one year of residency completed and therefore is not board eligible or board certified? We do work with residents. The opportunities can be a little bit le more limited um, because a lot of our clients are looking for providers that are truly board eligible or board certified. So the options are slightly more limited, um, but there could be certain situations in which a resident could work. So I would definitely reach out to a recruiter and see if there's anything available right now. But we do work with residents and fellows. Um, Jennifer's asking about how long does it take to go through the credentialing process. It depends on the facility. So it could take as short as one week. It could take as long as 90 days. Uh, it depends on the health system and their particular requirements. Some facilities require primary source ver verifications, while others might only need a copy of your medical license and a couple of references. So that will be on a case-by-case -case basis. Um, Sam Devins is asking, I would be an independent contractor, correct? Yes, you would be a 1099 independent contractor through Barton Associates. 
Um, Crystal's asking if you have an expired license in the state you wish to work in and want to activate your license in advance, how can a locums find a supervising physician who will be willing to do this for a PA? So actually, we have a lot of physicians that work through Barton Associates that really enjoy jumping on to collaborative roles. So we have a huge pool of providers that are oftentimes willing to proactively sign on to be a supervising PA or a collaborating or a supervising MD for a PA or a collaborating MD for an MP. So this is something we act actually do a lot of. Um, Zachary's asking what's the best thing about working with Barton Associates? I mean, I think there's a lot of things. I think one of the big things is we're very, very relationship based. So there's always a single point of contact. I know when I was a recruiter, I wanted to form the best relationships possible with my providers. I want to be available 24 seven. I want to know everything about you guys so I could find you the best fit and also make sure if anything goes wrong or there's ever a problem that I'm available to handle it. So I think definitely our relationship based style here is huge. I also think we have a lot of resources. I think our licensing team, credentialing team are unparalleled. I think they go above and beyond. They know their stuff and they do a really good job at making sure licensing and credentialing is extremely easy for the providers. Um, let's see, does the malpractice coverage include a tail or does it strictly cover the length of assignment? Um, depending on what specialty you're in, yes, we will include a tail. Um, it'll vary depending on what specialty you're in, um, but that is something that we do offer, yes. Um, how, far advanced, how far in advance do you recommend looking for a position? So I always say, try to always be looking for a position. If you're in locums, it's a temporary market. Things are always changing. So I would say, you know, always be talking to your recruiter about new options. But I think a good rule of thumb is looking, you know, two to three months in advance. You have to keep in mind, credentialing can take a few months. Um, always keep an open ear to new jobs because things change at the drop of a hat. Carissa is asking if looking at change next summer fall, is it too early to reach out? I don't think it's ever too early to reach out. I have, I'm a big planner. I know my recruiters like to be on top of things. So if you're serious about getting into locums next summer, we should be talking right now. We can talk about getting you new licenses. We can be introducing you to some of our clients so you get a feel for our market. So I would say go on and sign up today. <laughs> Um, Billy's asked, oh, I'm sorry. Ernie's asking, do you, um, do we have rheumatology PA positions? Um, yes, we do work in the rheumatology industry, so that should be something that we would offer. All right, so Saida's asking, is it enough to have the state medical license alone to get started, or do we need to have the DEA license too? So you can absolutely just get started with the state medical license. Um, once you find a job, that's actually the point at which you can get a DEA. So you actually can't apply for a DEA until you have that position. So we could absolutely work with finding you the position. And when we find the right job, then at that point, we can actually help you apply for that DEA. So you could definitely still look without having the DEA. See what our next question is. How hard is it to find a job for someone who is unvaccinated? Um, there's definitely still openings out there in facilities that are accepting non-vaccinated people. We are starting to see that change a little. There are a lot of hospitals and clinics that are requiring vaccination, but there are some that don't, and we make sure to ask that on the front end. So when we are digging into a position, we make sure we ask, is that a requirement? Um, another question, do you help with getting licenses in other states? Yes, absolutely. Um, we We'll help assist with the process. We'll cover the cost for you if you're interested in getting into locums. And we'll actually do a lot of the paperwork and make it as easy for you as possible. So we'll walk you through all of that. Uh, we have a great licensing team. They're experienced. They have relationships with all the medical boards. They're used to doing the process. So we can definitely do that for you. Um, Crystal's asking, since salaries vary across the country, how do you account for appropriate compensation with positions from all over the country? Um, with locums, um, it doesn't always it doesn't always depend on where the job is. There are a lot of other factors that come into play. Um, some you have to look at the health system. Some facilities have higher budgets. Um, we do try to accommodate for the cost of living. Obviously, some places are more expensive to live, but with locums, you usually are getting your lodging compensated. So I don't think the area of the country actually affects the compensation that much. We're actually just trying to get you the rate that you want to get. If you've made a consistent rate, you know, despite where you're going, we want to make sure we're trying to match that for you. Um, Jordy, is it, are there cost-effective family health insurance options that you recommend? So we don't cover health insurance at, through Barton Associates. Most local companies don't, but we do actually have a health insurance guide. So we could absolutely send that out after this and point you towards some helpful options for you. 
David Hayes is asking, how long are the assignments? Um, is it three months or longer? So on average, assignments tend to be right around three to six months. But we see assignments range from as short as one to two days to as long as a year plus. So it really does vary. There are a lot of options out there. Um, but I would say most on average are right around three to six months. Jason Kim, how is pay per site determined? I've talked about in recruiters. Okay, so um, a rate, again, I think I mentioned this earlier, it definitely varies based on the position, how urgent the job is, where it is, uh, what's their budget, what's your level of experience. So there's never one exact rate that we can give you, but your recruiter is always working in your best interest to negotiate the best rate possible for you at that particular position. Um, James Erica is asking any info specifically for locum dentist. Dentistry, I'm excited that someone brought that up today. Dentistry is actually one of our hottest markets right now. We have hundreds of positions. If you're interested in dentistry, call in today. We have them nationwide, all 50 states. Um, we work with some major DSOs. I would say this is honestly one of our hottest specialties right now. So if you're looking for dentistry specialties, we're there, we're here for you, call in today. We've got a lot of recruiters that are ready to talk to you. Um, Crystal's asking, will you cover the cost for licensing in another state before a provider is hired? Yes, absolutely. We're all about being proactive at Barton Associates. We will go out and purchase the license ahead of time. Even if we don't have a job for you in that state, our goal is to be proactive so that when you're ready to work, we'll have that license for you. So we will purchase it and pay for it ahead of time. Stephanie's asking, what is the recommended level of experience to get started with locum? Um, again, you know, we don't need a certain level of experience as long as you've, you can technically work as a resident or a fellow, but once you've graduated your fellowship or your residency or, you know, if you're a dentist, dental school and you're ready to go, you know, you don't need a certain level of experience. Some clients might prefer that a provider has a year of experience under their belt, but as a locum company, you know, we welcome new grads. We'll try to work with everyone. Um, we do you know, look for people to have at least two years of recent clinical experience. Um, most clients are looking for that piece, but in terms of you know, experience, we welcome new grads and we are ready to introduce you to the locum industry. What is the interview process like? So once we, I assume you mean with the client, so once we um, introduce you to a client, once you're interested in one of our jobs, we'll submit your CV and a presentation down to that client and it highlights your experience, your past, shows why you're a good fit for the job and also what expenses and rate that you'll need. So if the client is interested in you, they will let us know they want to interview you and typically we would do a conference call between the provider and between the clients. So Barton Associates has somebody coordinating that conference call. Um, this day and age, ever since COVID, we've been doing a lot more video calls. The video is the future now. So it could also potentially be a Zoom call or a Google Hangout. And it's usually a one to two step process interview. Locums, it moves quickly. It's the beauty of locums. So if you have one interview with the client and you like them and they like you, we can oftentimes move forward right after that. Terry's asking, does each person have one specific recruiter assigned to them? Uh, yes, so everyone has a single point of contact, um, one recruiter that is going to be there to cover you on jobs, answer any questions that you have, they'll be your day-to-day -day consultant, and while you go on assignment, that recruiter is also going to be your point person. So they'll be reaching out to you while you're on assignment, making sure that it's going well, handling any issues, and constantly trying to keep you working and covering you on our jobs and making sure we have your next job ready for you if you need it. Brian Proctor, what is the psychiatry market like these days? Well, Brian, I was a psychiatry recruiter for nine years, so I'm glad that you put a message up here. The psych market's actually doing great. Um, we saw it rebound after COVID, obviously coming off of COVID, you know, mental health issues, substance abuse issues have only, you know, increased. So psych is looking amazing. We have tons of openings nationwide right now. We need help. A lot of clients that are willing to wait for licenses too. So if you're interested in a psych job, get online and sign up today. <laughs> All right, Andrea, I know licensing can be expensive. Is there a fee associated with any of Barton services? No, there's not. Uh, we can get your license proactively for you up front. Um, we'll pay for it. And there's no expenses that you need to call, that you need to pay. And even you know, if you end up getting a license, then a year from now it expires and you want to keep it active, we'll also assist with renewing it as well. See, Kelly asking is asking, how far in advance do you make assignments? Uh, we've made assignments. Sometimes it can be quick, a week in advance. Sometimes we'll make them six months in advance, eight months in advance. Some clients really do like to plan out. So 
that could range anywhere from a week to a year in advance. And if you're looking to book out your schedule, definitely let us know because we have a lot of clients that are already looking to hire in 2022 and beyond. Miriam's asking, how is the job market for FMP nurse practitioners? Great. So aside from dentistry, I think primary care is another one of our big booming markets. We're constantly looking for FMPs um, as well as family practice doctors. So that's a great market for us. And someone's asking about Florida. Again, we place in all 50 states. Um, Florida is definitely one of the states we see jobs in. So if you don't see something on our website, I always encourage talk to your recruiter because a lot of times, even if there's not an opening right now in that certain state, your recruiter will know there's an opening around the corner or let me tell you about this really good client that we're expecting jobs from in a few months. So I always encourage, even if you don't see a job on the website, talk to your recruiter. They'll know what's going on and what's around the corner. Terry's asking, are there any costs associated with working with Barton? Um, honestly, no. Uh, once you sign up with us and we get you introduced to clients, you know, you're, you're making the money. You know, we're here as a resource for you. We're here as a free resource. Um, we handle the credentialing costs. We handle the licensing costs. The travel costs are covered as well. So there really should be nothing coming out of your pocket. Let's see. Is the travel stipend a set amount and can you spend it how you want? An example is a camper. So that'll all be client by client. We've definitely had situations where if someone is using a camper or they have their own means of travel, we could absolutely entertain a stipend. So that's one of those case by case scenarios where I'd recommend discussing it with your recruiter and we can always present that situation down to the client on the front end. But yes, we've done stipends before. Um, let's see, Kimberly's asking, for mental health as a nurse practitioner, do you have to be licensed as a certified psych MP or as adult nurse practitioner acceptable? Kim, this is a really great question. So some of our clients do require that you are licensed as a psychiatric nurse practitioner, but not all. So we actually do have some clients that will take adult nurse practitioners and um, that's acceptable to them as long as they have some level of psych experience. So we have those clients that are out there. So if you're looking for a psych job, I can actually think of a couple right now that I know will take a psych MP without the certification. So definitely reach out. Um, Brian Proctor is asking, are there any telemedicine opportunities? Yes, we have telemedicine opportunities. Um, that's something we're always on the lookout for, especially coming off of COVID. I think telemed got even more popular. Our account executives, they're trained to look for telemed and on-site opportunities. So yes, we do have telemedicine. Stephanie's asking, do you place with urgent cares? Yes, urgent cares is a, a huge place of business for us. We see a lot of needs there, 100%. We have a lot of urgent care needs. So you'll see a lot of that. All right, let's see if I've missed any questions here. Um, someone's asking about a market for pediatricians. Yep, we do work with pediatricians too. We have a lot of different specialties. We have psychiatry, dentistry, primary care, OBGYN, oncology, surgery, gastroenterology. So the list goes on and on. So if you have a question about a certain specialty, the chances are we probably do it or have seen it. If my assignment is in my city, do I still qualify for transportation? Typically, yes. Even if your assignment is in your city or it's within driving distance, you would qualify for some type of compensation whether or reimbursement, whether it's mileage or it could be, um, maybe you have to take Ubers or a taxi. So that would be client by client, but typically, yes, you would qualify for some type of transportation coverage in that instance. Um, Chris Keeley is asking what types of providers can be locums. So we place MDs, nurse practitioners, physician assistants, psychologists, dentists, um, and a lot of people that end up getting into locums, they're looking for a transition, they're looking for flexibility. Um, you know, we see people that have perm jobs that like to do locums part-time, so they might want to do it to supplement and cover on the weekends. Um, we see people that are of that retirement age that are looking to do locums as supplemental. We see a lot of new grads that are getting into locum. So the, the options are endless. We have a lot of different types of people that can do locums. Uh, Wendy, um, please tell me how you cover malpractice. Uh, good question, Wendy, and I don't think anyone's actually answered this so, or asked this before. So we do cover malpractice insurance. We have grade A Evanston malpractice insurance. Um, you are fully covered while you're on assignment with us. Um, so that's something you do not have to worry about at all. Um, let's see here. Tony, what kind of training on electronic medical records? Um, so our, when you go to work for us, um, you will get training typically on the EMR system. So every time you start a new job, 
the facility will give you some type of orientation, some type of training on the EMR system. And I know there's so many different ones out there, um, tons of different ones for you guys to learn, but usually you will get some type of training when you start the job. Kimberly is asking, what if you get to an assignment and find it's not a good fit after all? So that, you know, that can happen sometimes. So this is a good time to call your recruiter. Always call your recruiter. The second you have a concern, even if it's a really small concern, call your recruiter, let them know. Oftentimes you can work through it. The recruiter can talk to our account executive and we can work through it and come to a solution. And if it's really, truly not a good fit, then you always have your out clause. So typically that's 30 days, 30 day notice. So you can talk to your recruiter about putting that in, but your recruiter is there to help you problem solve. All right, how are my taxes handled? That's a great question. So because you're a 1099 contracted worker, um, you are responsible for your own taxes. Barton actually doesn't take any taxes out of your pay. We will send you the 1099 at the end of the year um, and you'll be responsible for your own taxes. But we have amazing resources on how to do your taxes and we can actually apply with a link or send you guys the link after this, but we do have a tax webinar that can walk you through all of that. So I would definitely highly recommend checking that out. David Hayes asks, do you have a checklist for the clients to make sure they are a good place to work and reputable clinic? We definitely try to do our due diligence on our clients. Uh, we have an amazing risk management team. They actually do a deep dive into the clients and try to make sure they're reputable, they're ethical. Um, and of course, we really rely on provider feedback. If we've had multiple providers work at a facility and there appears to be some red flags, we're gonna do our due diligence and look into that because we do wanna make sure that we're sending you guys to the best facility possible. Chris Keeley's asking who uses locum tenens providers. So we actually see a wide variety of facilities that use locums, it could be a big health system, a community hospital, um, it could be a clinic, an urgent care, uh, there's tons of dental offices, we've seen forensic placements in prisons, we're on a forensic unit, psychiatric hospitals, anywhere that could potentially bring on a doctor, MP, PA, or dentist we've probably talked to and had an opening with, um, so the opportunities are extensive. And these facilities, they're usually reaching out because they have a temporary need. It could be a maternity coverage. It could be that someone just retired. Um, they might've had you know, somebody go out on sick leave. And a lot of times people actually just need that temporary solution because they can't find a permanent doctor. As you all probably know on this, there's a huge shortage right now. And a lot of these hospitals, clinics, et cetera, they're struggling to find perms. So that's when we come into play and we try to match you guys up there for three or six months to really bridge that gap before they can find perm. Um, Don is asking, can you expedite medical state licensing to fill a position? Um, there are a lot of states that offer temporary licenses or locum licenses where we can get the license faster. And there are also a lot of states that will accept a letter of need from a client. So if the client has an urgent, desperate need and they need someone in there next week and they really need the patient coverage, they can actually write a letter of need to that medical board and the medical board could potentially expedite it. So there are ways to do it, not always, but there are ways to try to do it. Um, Vikas is asking, if I need to take time off um, a week in the middle of an assignment, are clients flexible with this? So clients typically prefer, if you need time off, to either let us know at the beginning of a contract or try to give 30 days notice if possible, because the clients are also trying to schedule patients and make it work. So if you can give 30 days notice in advance of when you need time off, or if you can put it in the contract ahead of time, that's ideal. Um, if situations come up that are unavoidable, like an emergency or something, and of course everyone tries to be flexible in those scenarios. Brian Proctor, weird question. Um, <laughs> if I retire and move to Mexico, do they pay for travel from there? Or do I need to get stateside? first. It honestly depends on the client. Um, the client might be willing to cover the flight from Mexico. We've seen it a lot. So I would not rule it out. I would not rule it out. Um, most clients, they're very flexible and they're willing to pay those flights to and from the lodging. That's just a part of the local market. And these clients understand how valuable you guys are. So they're usually willing to pay those flights. <laughs> Chris Keeley is asking, what is the main benefit of working with a healthcare staffing agency? So the main benefit, I think there's a few, um, is really having that recruiter, having that point of contact, that person that's there 24 hours a day, seven days a week, to be your advocate. Um, we're not just recruiters, we're consultants. So we're truly trying to have your best interest at heart. We're trying to find you the right fit. 
we're trying to advocate for the rate you want and the expenses that you need. Um, so it's really having that advocate that is trying to find you the right job and that also will handle issues on assignment for you. If my doctor calls me at 10 p.m. with a problem, I'm answering and I'm making sure that I'm doing my best to solve it. So I think that one-on-one -on -one relationship is really key. But I also think that um, I also think that uh, working with an agency where you have someone handling the licensing, the credentialing, that takes a huge burden off of you, right? So someone's there doing the paperwork for you, they're helping you out. Um, so we're trying to take the brunt of the work off of you. So I think that's the main benefit. So Chris is asking, I have a permanent job, but I wanna work locums part-time, can I do that? Absolutely. So I always encourage you guys to let your recruiter know exactly what your schedule is, what's the permanent schedule, what's your flexibility. We have jobs that are weekend jobs. Uh, we have some jobs that are a week a month. Um, occasionally we might have a one day week or night. So it's absolutely an option. We have plenty of people that do part-time locums. It's a great way to supplement. Um, just definitely let your recruiter know, you know where your flexibility is with your schedule and we can make that happen. Um, Ernie's asking, do you need to take call as a locum? No, you do not need to take call as a locum. This is all part of telling your recruiter your preferences. Um, there are probably some jobs out there that might require it, but we'll tailor our search to make sure we're finding you jobs that don't require a call, or we have a lot of instances where we present your CV down and just let the client know they don't want to do the call portion of that. So a lot of that is negotiable. I never rule anything out, but no, call is not required. Uh, Mary Beth is asking, does the salary pay take into consideration that we are paying our own taxes and Social Security? It definitely does. Um, if you look up the average permanent salary in your state, and then look at the locum hourly rate, it's significantly higher than what the perm salary is. So I think it absolutely does take into account the fact that you're not getting the 401k and those options. So I think that it does bridge the gap there. Let's see, Crystal is asking, do locum companies make you sign a non-compete clause so as to not work with other locum companies? Nope, not at all. Um, if you sign our contract, you are still free to work with any other locum company that you want. We are not holding you back from having options. We always say it's good to have options. So you are not obligated to just work with Barton Associates. We love our exclusive providers, but you're able to work with other companies too. <laughs> Sam is asking for me, a semi-retired physician. I have found locum tenants work great. Can Barton arrange assignments where my spouse and I can travel to different places? Yes, Sam, that's exactly what we do. Um, we would love to get you and your wife traveling around. Um, if you don't have a recruiter already, I would sign up and let them know exactly where do you wanna go? What licenses do you wanna get? Um, we can try to arrange a good spot for you and your wife. And of course, a lot of people travel with spouses, significant others, pets, just let us know. I have someone working for me right now that has two parakeets and seven cats and we made it work in Boston. So we can make anything work. <laughs> Let's see, Dan Daniel's asking, if after a contract, if both parties want to pursue a W-2 relationship, will Barton stand in the way of that? Um, we definitely have terms in our contract because we're a locum company, but we definitely want our client and our provider to be happy. Everything's case by case situation, but at the end of the day, if a client and a provider love each other and they could see a future permanent relationship, you know, we'll try to work with you best that we can. We, we want to make sure everyone's happy while also keeping in mind that we are a locum company and that's what we do, but we'll work with you. Do I have to be board certified? So a lot of our clients do require that the provider is either board certified or truly board eligible. Not all clients. I would say we're at a point where most do, but there are still some clients out there that take non-boarded. It's just they're fewer and far between, but just make sure you always tell your recruiter if you are or if you are not board certified, because that can be a crucial piece in the credentialing process. Um, Tony Stevens, any help with finding childcare? Well, Barton doesn't have a program in place for that, but I can tell you as a recruiter for nine and a half years, if someone needed help finding childcare, I'd be the first one on the phone to help you do it. So I, we are a big relationship-based company, so I can tell you right now, if you tell your recruiter, would you help me find some childcare? I bet they'd be on the phone helping you, and I know that I would. So we'll, we'll help in any way that we can. Do you have statistics which states are in need of dentists and which are faster in terms of licensure? Yes, we have a whole licensure fact sheet actually. Probably can't recite all 50 states for you off the top of my mind, but we do have a fact sheet. We can absolutely get that out to you guys. Um, in terms of which states have the highest needs, there are certainly trends right now. Off the top of my head, I could tell you Wisconsin's a big one, Georgia's a big one, 
Illinois is a big one. So those are probably two of the three biggest, but we could give you a little bit more information on that. Let's see, Terry's asking, do you see more positions available in hospitals or private practices? Um, I guess it depends on the specialty. I would say probably more so in hospitals. Um, if you look at, for example, if you're looking at psychiatry, definitely a lot more in hospitals. If you're looking at dentistry, we're probably looking more at, you know, clinics, but we don't see as much in private practices. I would say mostly it's in hospitals, community mental health centers, um, bigger health systems, but we, we have a lot of different types of jobs. So if you prefer something smaller, let your recruiter know that and we can tailor the search to that. All right, what's your favorite part about working at Barton? Um, I mean, I, I have a lot of different things about Barton that I love. I've been here for nine and a half years. This is actually my first and only job since college. Started here a week after I graduated. Um, so you can tell I clearly love it here. Um, I would say definitely the people here. I think they make the job. Everyone is so invested in making sure we have or give the best experience to our clients and our providers. Um, we're just such a relationship-based company. And we also are constantly trying to improve the way we do things internally. So the way we did things back in 2012 when I started versus the way we've streamlined things. Like I think when I started, we had three or four, maybe even less licensed or credentialers. Now we have a 50 man licensed credentialing team. So just the way that we evolve and we're constantly trying to adapt to better serve our providers and our clients. That's probably one of my, my favorite things. And I love working with you guys that did it for nine and a half years and love the relationships. It's great. All right, guys. Well, let's see. We got one more. I signed up on your site. Yay. Should I expect a general call soon or just when a job opportunity is found? No, you should definitely expect a call soon. As soon as you guys sign up, we want to get in touch with you. I think the big thing about Barton is we don't want to just call you only when we have a job. We want to stay in touch with you consistently and get to know you because um, things are always changing. So you should expect a call ASAP. Um, Terry's asking, how does Barton find their clients, companies that need people? Um, it's a combination of things. So some clients actually reach out actively to Barton, but we spend a lot of time calling the clients and introducing ourselves and letting them know what we do and how we do it. Um, a lot of our clients will refer us to other clients. It's a big, you know, it's obviously about networking and a lot of our clients are big health systems. So if we work with one facility, there could be six or seven other hospitals that are part of that branch. All right, guys, so thank you so much for all your questions. We actually have a giveaway today. I know all of you guys that joined the live today were entered into this giveaway. So we're giving away a power bank, a tote bag. Um, uh, we got a lunchbox here. I think there's an Amazon gift card. So we got some things to give out. Thank you again so much for all of you joining. Um, I hope that you'll all go on and register today um, if you haven't already registered and we'll all get in touch with you. We'll start talking about local assignments. We're all really excited to work with you here. Um, thank you so much again. And who knows, maybe I'll talk to some of you down the road. <laughs> Have a great day.